This video is about these three and a half inch uh, TFT LCD displays that uh, connect via SPI to your projects. This is about using these things for whatever the heck you would like to use them and do so as easily as possible. And that's made possible by today's sponsor, PZBWay. So I designed a combiner board to combine this LCD onto an ESP32 dev kit V1, which is the 30 pin dev kit. I'll link in the description below if you wanna know exactly which one, so that you can make it work for your projects. Here's a quick example I whipped up on a version one of my combiner board. So you've got the ESP32 here, and then here you go. You've got a nice little display for your weather project. And since this is a touch screen, you can actually touch the nodes. This one's not calibrated, so don't worry about it not touching exactly. And it'll refresh the display. This looks a little dim to you on camera because of my studio lights, but this is plenty bright. And the ESP32 has plenty of horsepower to run this thing. So let's get one of these set up. First things first is you want to get your ESP32. And I use these female pin headers. You're, you can solder it directly into the board here but just got to be careful that the pins don't stick out too far. You might have to flush trim them uh, afterwards or else your, um, your TFT module might get shorted by them. But I cut these from, you know, longer stock, custom length them to 15. You can also just buy 15 pin, female pin headers. It's up to you. And then here is the alignment. Shows you the V in and ground. Uh, so the V in ground pins are over here, V in and ground and 3v3 in ground, so it goes this way. And of course, this is very hackable because every single pin from your ESP is broken out over here for it to use. So typically just hold this down tightly and then uh, flow some solder onto a couple of the pins to tack them down. And once it's tacked down, then you can go and do the final soldering. So here we go. There's one, I usually do the four corners. A little bit hard to hold because the ESP32 is rocking her way down there. But flow solder, hold it flat, and then the other side, and hold it flat. Like that, and then just go ahead and solder all your other pins. So that's all done now. And if you are soldering your TFT directly to the PCB, um, this is the time where you would put your uh, pin headers. It would have to be on the ESP side here, you would put your pin headers there and solder them. But since I am going ahead and putting these headers like this, the female headers, uh, I won't bother. But if you do want to use some community made enclosures, which we'll talk about in a moment, you probably need to solder the LCD directly to this combiner PCB. But for the rest of us, I'm just going to grab here's a four pin female header, pop it on there, and a 14 pin female header, pop it on there. And then we're gonna drop that. You see here where it says TFT up. So that goes on here like so. And then we're gonna do the exact same process and solder all these pins. And there you have it. And this is why you may want to not use the pin headers because you see, it makes your stack up a lot thicker but there you go. So I like the ESP to be replaceable personally. So that's why I would probably put the ESP always on headers, but this can be stacked directly onto the PCB to make it a lot more compact, sort of like this thing here. You can see how much thinner my version one was than my version two, because this has nothing soldered onto headers. It's all soldered together. So it's like the thickness of the SD card in between. So there we go. So I was talking earlier about community cases and what was I talking about? Well, this here, this here is an ESP32 touchdown, which is a product uh, made by and sold by Dustin Watts. I'll link down in the description below, but this is essentially a Steam Deck, oh, sorry, Stream Deck. I always get those two confused nowadays. Um, that lets you sort of control your stream using these macros. 
and these macros show up on the display like so. And Dustin also released a you know free to use and open source project called the Free Touch Deck. And that is what has inspired this PCB because his ESP32, as you can see, based on Dustin Watts's Free Touch Deck project, his ESP32 was different to mine and I wanted to use his software as well. So that's what sort of inspired me to make this. And it just means you can use it for your own projects as well. And that's why I had this piece of software made so we can demo that functionality. So yes, you can plug this in and get Dustin Watts' free touch tech to work on this, uh, but you can also make your own projects. And what's neat about the community is the community and Dustin himself have designed some cases for this. So here is just the front part. You see the display fits nicely in there. And there's even, I believe this one is Johnny Bergdahl's design. And I have to line this up properly like so. And the switch goes in like this. There we go. And see, then the free touch deck fits in there, but also my combiner PCB will fit. It just probably won't fit using the uh, standoffs. There are designs though that do use standoffs for you folks that are not committed to one design in particular. See, does this fit in? Does seem to fit though. And then can I put the back on it? No, so you can't put the back on it. But there are designs that do incorporate standoffs for us non-committal folk. Oh, it does fit. Look at that. So there you go. So you get designs like this, designs with the open face, all great things that the community has built. I've dimmed the lights so that everything shows up a little bit better, but I went through the web installer for the uh, free touch deck and I just selected the uh, ESP32 dev kit C, even though this is the dev kit V1, uh, it uses the exact same code as just I combine the pins differently and it installed super easily. And there we go. There's the free touch deck working and all. You just have to touch all four corners as they ask as you plug it in. And so I hope that between the free touch deck uh, program and this uh, demo program, I hope that you are inspired enough to make your own projects using ESP and a display. It can really add that extra little kick to your project that you're missing. And in case you're not a coder like me, I'm not a coder either. This was actually done using uh, Claude.ai. So this is just an AI example of what's potential. Uh, and essentially you can integrate your sensors to you know, make your project look like this using AI's help because the libraries are very well documented. So yeah, all you need is an ESP32 dev kit, the one in the description and one of these boards, which you can also get from PCBWay in the description. And then I'll also link to Dustin Watts's project, um, the ESP32 Touchdown, which you can purchase sometimes when they're available, and the free touch deck project here. Now, I hope that got your mind going a little bit on how you can integrate this into your, into your ways, but there is another one. And this is a cheap yellow display. And this is made famous, I believe, by Brian Locke. These are very inexpensive boards. They're much lower resolution than this one, but they are touchscreen and they have an integrated ESP32. In fact, the same ESP32 that are on these two things. And if you plug this one in, there's a little demo project. Here we go. And here you go. So it shows it's 33 FPS, uh, the percentage of the CPU. Now, this one is a little bit, you know, it's, it's a little bit crappier. The, it does not broken out on the pins the same as these things, but it is pretty nice. See the buttons work. It does use a lot of CPU. Uh, visuals, there you go. Line charts, selectors. So either way, all of these things are available to you 
All the links you need are in the description. And I will hope you'll go over to peacebeway.com and order some of these boards to keep them supporting me. Thanks for watching. And I have the 23rd, which is Saturday, the 24th, which is Sunday, two days to record and edit a PCBWay video before the deadline.